28-year-old Rebecca Adiambo's family shunned her after discovering two years ago that she is a lesbian. When her neighbors found out, she was insulted, evicted, and in September, attacked. I was from the market. I was going home to prepare a meal after a long day of doing casual work in Eastlake. Someone approached me from behind. A crowd gathered, and some were shouting that I should leave the neighborhood. They started beating me and threw away all that I bought. 34-year-old Said Asmani documents cases of attacks on the LGBTQ community. Since the COVID-19 outbreak in March, he says there's been a jump in cases of abuse. Cafe is in place. People are told not to go to work. So they have to stay within their localities. So you find in our locality here in Pumwani, when uh, people notice and recognize that uh, in our neighborhood we have LGBTQ plus persons, they start to abuse them. They start to victimize them. Yeah, in a way that they feel that they don't want them in this community. The Gay and Lesbian Coalition of Kenya says during the pandemic, they have logged up to 10 attacks per month on the LGBTQ community. Kenya's government raised an alarm on increased cases of gender-based violence, but has offered no targeted help for LGBTQs. Inclusivity is still foreign to most of these uh, mainstream organizations and they try to sideline us because they feel like we don't deserve to be in those spaces. We don't deserve to get the opportunities or the resources that are available because of who we are or how we identify. Kenya is considered to be among the most progressive African countries, but the High Court in 2019 upset activists by upholding a colonial era law that punishes homosexual acts with up to 14 years in prison. It's been really difficult to engage the government in LGBT conversations, especially when you want to really you know, bring the case out that you have a section of a population that is really suffering. When asked to speak on LGBTQ abuse, Kenya's Ministry of Gender and Social Services referred a reporter to the United Nations Sexual and Reproductive Health Agency, UNFPA. Rael Lombor, for VOA News, Nairobi.